Welcome back for another deep dive. You know, we've been getting a lot of questions about AI and kids lately. It's definitely a hot topic. It is. So we thought, what better way to explore this than with a book aimed at young learners? Sounds fun. Which book are we diving into? So it's called Little AI Explorer. And honestly, even as an adult, it really got me thinking about how we approach learning about AI at any age. Interesting. What's the approach in Little AI Explorer? Well, they've created this whole fictional world called Generative Island, and the story unfolds through these really engaging characters who each represent different aspects of AI. Ah, so they're using storytelling to make these complex ideas more accessible. Exactly. Like, instead of bombarding kids with technical jargon, they meet Brushy, a talking paintbrush who helps them create art. I see. So it's showing the creative possibilities of AI right off the bat. Yeah, and it kind of reminds me of those old Choose Your Own Adventure books. There's another character named Pixel, and he guides kids through this virtual maze. Oh, I remember those books. Were they the ones where you got to choose what happened next? Totally. And Pixel shows how AI can kind of do the same thing, like how a game adjusts to your skill level. Right. So it's highlighting the adaptive nature of AI, how we can learn and respond to different needs and preferences. And then there's Storybot this magical storyteller. Okay, I think I see where this is going. Storybot uses AI to, well, tell stories. Exactly, but it's not just pulling them out of thin air. It analyzes tons of stories written by humans and uses those patterns to come up with its own. So it's like AI is learning from the best storytellers in history. And then using that knowledge to collaborate with kids to write their own stories. I love that emphasis on collaboration. It shows that AI is most powerful when it works with us, not in place of us. Right, like we're still in the driver's seat, but you know, it's not all about being plugged in either. Oh. Tell me more. So there's this place on Generative Island called Harmony Park, and it's a totally tech-free zone. Ah, so it's encouraging balance, reminding kids, and probably adults too, that while technology can be amazing, real life connections are just as important. It's like a built-in digital detox right in the middle of this AI adventure. But mm -hmm. speaking of adventure, they have this really cool way of explaining how AI learns. Oh, I'm intrigued. How do they do that? Okay, so picture this. There's this, this amazing library on Generative Island. A library. Classic. What's in it? Well, it's guarded by this character named Data Whisk. Data Whisk. Hmm. Sounds like a name only a book about AI for kids could get away with. Right. And Data Whisk sends the kids on a data quest. Basically, they have to gather information from all over the library, representing all sorts of different knowledge. I'm starting to see the connection. They're illustrating how AI learns by processing vast amounts of data. Exactly. But here's the really clever part. They don't just talk about how much data AI needs, but also about the kinds of data. That's so important. Right. It's like if you only ever showed an AI pictures of cats, it might think everything with fur is a cat. Exactly. So the book emphasizes having diverse voices and perspectives represented in the data. So it's about making sure AI gets a well-rounded education, just like we want for our kids. And speaking of, remember that trusty treehouse? Yeah, wasn't that where they talked about building safe and reliable AI? Yes. And I love how they frame it as building a relationship. Like yeah. you wouldn't just blindly trust a stranger. You have to learn how to interact with AI safely and responsibly. That's a great analogy. It takes something abstract and makes it relatable. Right. And they don't shy away from the fact that like any tool, AI can be misused. True. It has so much potential for good, but we have to be mindful of the risks too. Absolutely. So they give kids this kind of digital safety toolkit. Like they learn how to test AI systems to see if they're giving good information or making fair recommendations. It's like teaching them to think critically about what the AI is telling them and why. And it's not all doom and gloom. The book also shows how AI can help solve real world problems. Oh yeah. What was that part with the magical crystal ball? That was awesome. They see a future where AI helps with things like disaster relief, protecting animals, even medical research. Wow, it really captures the imagination and shows how AI can be a force for good. And it emphasizes that kids can help shape that future. They're not just along for the ride. Exactly. It's empowering for them to realize they have a voice in how this technology is used. Mm. And speaking of being active, the book doesn't just lecture at you. Remember Quizzy. Quizzy the chameleon. The yeah. quiz master. Yes. Those quizzes were so clever, making sure kids really understood the ideas. It's like you don't just read about AI. You get to try out your knowledge and see what you've learned. And the questions are really thought-provoking, too, getting at the heart of what AI is and how it works. 
It proves that even these complex topics can be engaging and accessible for young learners if you're creative. Definitely. <laughs> By the end of this book, kids aren't just AI literate. They're ready to think critically about the future of technology. Totally. And it's not just for kids either. There are resources for parents in the back. Like, they knew we'd finish reading and be like, okay, that was great, but now what? It's like they anticipated our questions. What kinds of resources are we talking about? Well, there's a whole section on introducing kids to chat GPT, which I bet a lot of parents are wondering about right now. It is. And the book gives really practical advice on setting age-appropriate boundaries and choosing prompts that spark creativity. Like, instead of just saying, write a story, you could say, write a story about a magical creature that can talk to animals. It's like giving them a creativity boost. Exactly. But the book also emphasizes the importance of parental supervision. It's not about letting kids loose on these powerful tools without any guidance. Right. It's about exploring them together, asking questions, and making sure they're being used safely and productively. Which makes total sense. I mean, you wouldn't just hand a kid a power tool without teaching them how to use it safely first, right? Exactly. And they even have a section on online safety tips that are specific to interacting with AI. Oh, like what? Things like protecting your personal information, being aware of potential risks, and encouraging open communication with parents. So it's really equipping both kids and parents to navigate this whole new world of AI. Absolutely. It's about approaching it with curiosity and wonder, but also with caution and responsibility. It sounds like this book isn't just a fun adventure story. It's a really thoughtful exploration of how we can prepare young minds for a future that's increasingly shaped by AI. I completely agree. And it subtly encourages us, the grown-ups, to think critically about our own relationship with technology. So what do you think is the biggest takeaway here? What do we want our listeners to walk away with? That AI doesn't have to be this big, scary unknown. This book shows us that we can empower kids to not just coexist with AI, but to be active participants in shaping how it's developed and used. And that starts with education, open conversations, and a healthy dose of curiosity. I love that. Curiosity, not fear. Well, that's about all the time we have for this deep dive. It's been fascinating to explore the world of Little AI Explorer with you. The pleasure was all mine. And to all our listeners, if this deep dive has sparked your curiosity, we encourage you to check out Little AI Explorer for yourself. Until next time, keep exploring.